Hi, in this film I'm going to consider some of the issues surrounding business ethics and perhaps the first is should business ethics be a separate branch of ethics at all? And I think there are two reasons for saying it should. One is that every business has an ethos or a characteristic set of uh, principles by which it seems to operate. And the question is whether that ethos, internal and external, is actually good or bad. And secondly, in UK law, it's not often realised that according to the Companies Act of 2006, companies exist as an entity which is a bit like a person. And to that entity, the directors have a particular duty. They're called fiduciary duties or duties of trust. And they include things like considering the consequences of all their actions and considering the interests of all parties involved in business operations and transactions. And that brings us to our second point, which is that business needs to address the interests of stakeholders. Now, according to stakeholder theory, if I quote for a moment from one of the writers, Edward Freeman, he says, my thesis is that I can revitalize the concept of managerial capitalism by replacing the notion that managers have a fiduciary duty to shareholders with the view that managers have a fiduciary duty to stakeholders. But the issue here seems to me, who are we going to define as a stakeholder? Well, really, it is anybody who is in any way involved with that country, who has an interest in the operations and the consequences of, of the operations of that company. So it includes, for example, overseas suppliers, the workers in overseas factories, the environment of those overseas factories and whether that environment is being polluted and so on. It's not just the immediate employees or shareholders. Stakeholder theory embraces quite a wide concept of interest. And the third question is, should companies simply be concerned with profit? This is an issue raised by Milton Friedman, the economist, who argued that it was up to governments to legislate because companies' interest was primarily about creating profit for shareholders. Now, there's a problem with this, and that is that every decision that a company makes, in a sense, will have a moral dimension, potentially, to it. And we can't cover every situation in law. And that is why, in the Companies Act, it's set up on a Kantian idea of duty, not specific rules necessary that apply, but general duties that take the interests of everyone at heart and call on the directors to show uh, care, concern, and uh, particularly for the welfare of all those involved in the operation or who might suffer for, as a consequence of the operation. So if we take, for, a, uh, for example, a case recently of Rolls-Royce, Rolls-Royce was um, accused and convicted in the end of bribing uh, an Indonesian company uh, by, uh, to the tune of £12.9 million to secure a contract for 700 Rolls-Royce engines. And in the end, it was fined by the statutory body in the UK that regulates companies for giving a bribe. Now, do we have a duty as a company not to bribe. The problem here is that stakeholders' interests can conflict. And it's just like the general moral problem that two goods can come into conflict. Here we've got the good of the workers, the benefit to the workers of creating jobs for 700 aero engines, was the order for Rolls-Royce, versus the interests generally of, of uh, company good reputation abroad of not being involved in bribing people which of course is an anti-competitive practice anyway and against the interests of um, contracts, for example, uh, being offered at the lowest price. So duties can come into conflict in this sense. If we consider a case study, which you'll find on the PEPED website of Enron, it's clear that there they broke the Kantian principle of not treating people as simply as a means to an end, but always also as an end in themselves in very many ways. They broke it, for example, in having a huge turnover of staff, 
probably the highest turnover of staff in the United States at the time, in the, in the late 1990s. Secondly, they broke their duty of care and trust to the people of California because they engineered blackouts, power blackouts, in order to raise the price of electricity, which they then sold back into California. And that is clearly treating the people of California as a means to an end. And finally, they swindled shareholders because they pretended they were making very large profits. And it later transpired that these profits were really an illusion created through Raptor companies, where you would shuffle the bad debts for a period of time um, and not declare them on the Enron balance sheet. So we can see that ethics and law do come together. Ethics obviously is wider than law. But there is a case for saying that duty of a Kantian sort is at the center of business ethical practice, particularly as it's set up in the UK.